name is Guy Wallace, and in this PAC video short, we're going to discuss the analysis team of the PAC processes for training and development. PAC is an acronym. It stands for Performance-Based, Accelerated, Customer and Stakeholder Driven Training and Development of Any Blend. The analysis team defines the performance requirements, the ideal performance, not some theoretical construct, but performance that is actually being performed at a level of mastery by the people assembled on the analysis team, the master performers. They also articulate the gaps of the incumbent population for those that aren't masters of performance. Why? Where are they falling short? What measures and metrics are they missing when they produce the outputs of the job? They also help with determining why that happens. What are the causes? What are the probable causes? Is it a deficiency of the environment and the supports that the incumbents that aren't master performers are using? Is it a deficiency of the knowledge and skills of those incumbent performers that aren't master performers? Is it something to do with the attributes and values of the performers that aren't master performers. Those attributes include physical attributes, psychological attributes, intellectual attributes, and then there's the personal values. Perhaps the recruiting and selection processes don't bring us what we need in terms of performers. And that's what's keeping some people from reaching a level of mastery. The analysis team owns all the analysis data. I like to tell the analysis team and the design teams that we, the instructional design folks, we own the process. However, they own all the data that's produced. They can name it whatever they feel like naming it. They can change it when they feel a need to change it in the course of the process. We own the process that says we're going to do A before B and then we're going to do C. They generate all the data and own that data that's produced when we do A, B, and C. They're on the payroll that day to create a consensus regarding the performance model data. What is ideal performance? What are the gaps? And what are the causes? And they also then systematically derive the enabling knowledge and skills and capture those in our knowledge and skill matrices. They own that data too. They may or may not present the outputs to the project steering team. Typically, they're not planned on being there, but I've had many projects where many people on the analysis and later on the design teams have insisted that they get a chance to go to the project steering team and explain this data. Often they're worried that the project steering team may reverse some of the decisions that they fought over during the analysis team meeting. The analysis review teams are there when we need to extend the review of the analysis data because the project steering team isn't capable or not quite comfortable enough to review thoroughly the detailed data that's generated. This allows them to extend that review of the analysis data before it's finally approved and then used in the design efforts. The analysis review teams reviews the analysis data and submits suggested changes to both the performance model data and the knowledge and skill data. This is yet to be approved then by the project steering team. All changes before they're taken to the project steering team are ideally reviewed by the analysis team and approved as well. They had come to consensus on this. They were empowered to generate this data. They own this data. The last thing that we want to do is go change it on them just because another group later on said something different or took exception to what they said. They're part of the process of integrating all of the feedback into the final data set that's reviewed with the project steering team in the gate review meeting at the conclusion of the analysis phase. I've been practicing, publishing, and presenting on these methods since 1982. My recent book, Six Pack, covers all of this in great detail.